Uh, hi everyone. I'd like to um, introduce um, Sean Fitz Sean Cochran. And at long last, I've met Sean. I've been following his page for about ten years, <laughs> and yeah, and um, it was through a friend of mine actually in Limerick that I discovered that you were here. You know, so just to introduce how I know know you, and that I've been following your page for ten years, and. Uh, I was delighted to follow you because you are an amazing sand artist and also you have, I'm just going to pan around here, you have an amazing studio here um, in Bonman on the Copper Coast, which is amazing. And of course, I'm familiar with the area because I spent my childhood down here, down in Boatstrand. So I'm very familiar and I'm so happy to meet you, Sean, at long last. Likewise, and I've been threatened to come to up here for I don't know how long, but you know the way... Life gets busy and you never do it. And so I made a conscious decision to the stick to my guns and get up here. And I was delighted that you agreed to meet me and that we could talk about the work that you're doing here, Sean. So welcome, Sean, and thank you for meeting me. My pleasure, my pleasure. <laughs> um, so I suppose if we start at the start, Sean, how did you end up at in Bunmahan at the Copper Coast? Um, well, I suppose... Uh... We're um, where we're living here now. We built this. This is our studio, which is connected to our home just over 10 years ago and set up the art hand is the name of our business. So yeah. um, my wife is an artist as well. So we kind of uh, fell in love with this site. Yeah. And uh, we have a few so fields around. Miranda's your, your wife, isn't yes. it? And this is her art. That's some of her uh, art. Absolutely. Yeah. She's kind of taken over the studio here now in the last uh, yeah. uh, year or so since COVID and things. Uh, so she's, she's uh, this this was kind of like really kind of an art school, um, but now it's more Miranda's studio and a little bit of retail. We kind of open up the doors by appointment as a kind of a, kind of a slightly like a gallery almost. Uh, exactly. Her work and my work. And I know you've done a lot of workshops here as well with groups. Yeah, and, up, yeah. In, up until that, up until then, we were doing lots of workshops with uh, stained glass and mosaic and batik and uh, all kinds of different workshops with groups, small mm -hmm. groups mainly, large groups mm -hmm. uh, in the outdoors as well, schools and... Uh, Actually, that's groups. how I got to know you was through a, li a Limerick friend of mine whose daughter came here to you. That's right. And he was saying, oh, um, this amazing art college <laughs> down in Bonman. And I said, Bonman? And of course, I knew you were near my relations. And of course, that's I followed you straight away. And I went, my God, what a beaut. And I... The view you have out of here, right out out over the cliff, is just amazing. Yeah, it's a beautiful part of the world. Mm. Uh, we're smack bang in the middle, actually, of the Copper Coast. Yes. So between Tremor uh, to the east of us and Dungarvan, Dun Dungarvan, to the west, yeah, uh, we're right in the middle. Um, it's uh, designated by UNESCO as a global geopark. So it really has. It's a, an amazing kind of like an undiscovered uh, part it's, of Ireland. It is a little uh, gem, isn't it? it really not is not gem, a lot yeah. of people know yeah, about not it. Not a yeah. lot of people, which is, which is nice as yeah, well. Yeah, because they mined copper here years that's ago. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. So um, I interrupted you there about how you came to to um, arrive into Bunmahan. <laughs> well, I suppose um, the cottage that we're in now, uh, has. there's been a cottage standing here since at least the 1800s, um, but maybe yeah. further back. Mm -hmm. It's facing directly southwest of the Into the Wind, as it would have been the tradition uh, That's right. of protection. Uh, but in the end, we had to rebuild the cottage when we, uh, the final wall and the architect condemned it. And so, so it is a replica of the original cottage now. But I suppose when we stood inside that door in the exact same position there in the old cottage, which was... Uh, at the old thatch and then it was galvanized outside that and the old paint coming off the walls and the old fireplace was there and there's double doors here and the, the old atmosphere that was in it was there was a very happy uh peaceful uh atmosphere uh in the land and in this space so i suppose once it was for sale for i don't know 10 years or something and, okay and nobody could buy it because the planning was so difficult and everybody wanted to buy it but we we kind of fought the uh fought our way through the planning process and even finally through Board Panola for a year and uh, managed to convince the uh, powers that be that, you know, we weren't going to interrupt with the uh, scenic, uh, you know, aspect of the landscape and so on. So, yeah. uh, so, so, so we've been here nearly 10 years now. Wow. Um, I'd say you're delighted you uh, won that 
despite yeah, <laughs> to yeah, stay here. Yeah, yeah you could have you, you could have given yeah. up, but I'm glad you yeah, didn't. Yeah, it was yeah. quite an experience because uh, at that stage we had actually bought the site when we were still, um, um, as you call it, a vice, you know, and it really kind of was. It was for four years with the planners, and then a year with Bor Panola. Uh, it was quite an experience, really. Yeah. And now, but now the fruits of the, the rewards of all that time, I suppose, um, is the kind of lifestyle that we lead now. Um, Absolutely. So we have two young kids, well, they're teenagers now. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but it really is, even though they wouldn't admit it, it really is a beautiful uh, place for kids to grow up. Yeah. It's, uh, and I know you built on a kind of an extension here and you've got this amazing view out over the cliff to the ocean. Why? Well, yeah. You couldn't, you can't buy that. You can't. Well, well it's actually, our house is connected. Yeah. Uh, that's the stairs up into the loft, but there's another stair that goes, uh, behind that wall there's another stairs that goes literally underground uh oh so our house is uh the single story building um that does have a beautiful it's a very modern uh building concrete floors and exposed mm. to work and piping so you're a bit like the two of the don and then you've gone, right. underground. <laughs> <laughs> gone underground i love it <laughs> Yeah, and you've got a you've got your grass roof there, haven't yeah, you? As so, well? Yeah, so yeah, it's highly insulated. Uh, yeah, um, it's not a passive house, and you know, in the fact that it's a mass concrete uh, walls um, for thermal gain as well. We've got a lot of glass in the front. Uh, it's triple glaze, and it's got like something like um, which you would need with the powerful yeah, ocean storms exactly, that come in. Yeah. Exactly, and there's three hundred tons of uh, subsoil on the roof, so it's highly insulated with the grass. Yeah, absolutely. Is, it's, it's it's like two or three feet of subsoil, and then. Yeah. Then the cliff grass, the red fescue grass that's grown on top of that. Yes. Uh, so it's really, really highly insulated. It took a few years for the building to heat up. Mm. Uh, but since then, it's just a really, really beautiful building to, mm. uh, to live in. I know. I mean, I'm sitting here. I know it's a beautiful day and the sun is shining, but it is quite nippy because we're nearly at the end of October. But in here, it's quite comfortable. There's no heat on and exactly. it's because of the, the amount of windows that you have yeah and it's a very comfortably warm and yeah we even have the windows and door open opened today. yes yeah, absolutely and, so, and what a day we have yeah absolutely isn't it yeah so sean um so that was your arrival anyway to bunman and i'm delighted that you did and i'm delighted you're here because um and i know from a child that when i came down here as a child i have very 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 special fond memories of here it's so beautiful I had a very happy memories of here, you know, so I'm so delighted you're here. Thank you. You're welcome. So from then on, then what what did you what what did you actually want to achieve then with the with the art and how did that? Well, the art and really, I suppose, uh, back then, 10 years ago, kind of nearly uh, it was a means to an end in terms of uh, making a living. Yes. Uh, so we're both artists. So back in the recession, nobody really wants to buy art. Uh, so, so, yeah. so we found that the best solution for us in terms of being able to sustain ourselves was to teach art. Mm -hmm. So, um, which was, wasn't really a natural calling, but, um, uh, but Miranda um, comes from a background in, in uh, Repousse and uh, Metalwork and Batik and uh, was trained in Grenon Mills. So she'd have a, a kind of craft. You're joking and, me. Yeah. She trained at Grenon Mills. She did. That is my brother-in-law who started that. No way. Yeah, George Owen. Really? Yeah. Small world. Oh my wow. God, yeah. Well, she's a protégé up there. You uh, are joking me. No, no. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's my brother-in-law. He's married to my sister. Wow. He started, he was an art teacher in Kilkenny. Yeah. And like that, he, uh, he what what actually happened was he, um, there was a niche there for kids to get into second year art college. Yeah. And to get into art college straight out of school, you needed so many points. But as you know, uh, creative kids are not really, sometimes they're not great academically to get yeah. the points, yeah. but they are actually talented yeah. in their art. Yeah. So he found a niche where they could come to Grenon Mills if they didn't get into art college on the points that they needed. They could do a year at Grenon Mill and get into second year um, art college through the Grenon Mill. So it was a great, it was an amazing insight that he saw. And I think we should be grateful, really, that we have a, an amazing amount of artists now. Because of it. Because of it. Absolutely. That would have probably been so discouraged that they, did, they didn't get into art college because yeah. they just academically yeah. didn't get the points. Yeah. Uh, and so I'd say a number of artists are 
grateful to, today for the Grenon Mill. And that's how it started. Wasn't that amazing? Yeah. Small world. This is an unbelievable small, small world. world. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Miranda, um, having a lot of that kind of uh, craft training as well as the kind of fine art kind of that she does these days, like, so she 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 did certain workshops and I come from stained glass and mosaic background. So we were teaching stained glass, batik, mosaic, um, workshops for private groups and yeah. schools and all <clears throat> kinds of different things. And that sustained us for the last seven or eight years, for, for maybe seven or eight years. And then comes along, you know, a year and a half ago, we all know things change in the world. So Miranda and I kind of took the opportunity to kind of think of uh, re- uh, changing our lifestyle mm. in terms of uh, how we we're going to make a living. Um, so, which has been it's been it's been great for us because Miranda has been able to focus more on her own work uh, indoors in the studio here, mm. and I've been able to focus more on my work outdoors in my studio in the in the great outdoors. Because uh, your 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 uh, your canvas is the sand, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I suppose mainly it is. Um, yeah. What a canvas! Yeah, it's quite a can- like. Yeah, I mean every day, uh, like the, the low tide today, I think is at half seven this evening. So I'll be on the tide again um, with my friend Joe at uh, starting at half three today to build up to the uh, low tide at half seven. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I suppose I'd have it in my head like what time of the uh, what time of the tide more than the time if you know what I mean um, yes. each day. I understand what you're saying. And you learn about the ocean through the art that you do because you need the low tide don't yeah. you to do yeah. the art. Yeah. 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 Now sometimes if I'm working on the west coast uh, like we had we had a very very busy few months of uh, sand art so it, actually we were in seven counties actually um, uh, if I can remember them Kerry, Cork, Sligo, uh, Mayo were we in Mayo? Yeah we were, were slightly in Mayo, uh, Wexford, Dublin Cork, and back to Waterford. Wow. Uh, so yeah we were literally on tour for a few months uh, on commissions uh, like when we, when we take a commission in the west of Ireland something like that we always try and stay for two or three days and then head off to the east or whatever. So your clock, your body clock gets out of sync. It's like... Um, Cause you're, you're, because you're on the ocean time yeah, or the, the tide, the tide tide, tidal the time. Yeah. It is on the east. Or so when I go to the UK and I'm working on the sand, it, 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 it's what I find different over there, working in Northumberland, actually up near Scotland, you're looking across at Norway. So the aspect, the direction you're facing, like normally on the south coast of Ireland, I'm I'm facing due south, which is straight, straight that way. Yeah, it's actually that way. Uh, uh, so you you kind of have a kind of a sense of direction and a sense of mm. planting yourself in the the sea is always on that that side, and the, you know you, you, whether you revolve around your the, as you're creating the art. Yeah, you have a sense of where is inland. Yeah, and where is out to the sea. Do you feel Do you feel you have a connection to the ocean in a more intimate way than being connected to it by time. It's really not about time, is it? It's about I know I've, what I'm trying to say is that when I was a kid, I had no watch and I knew by the tide what time it was because I used to go out with my uncle's fishing at 4 p.m. To, for the lobsters. Yeah. And I knew what time it was by the ocean where it was. I'm saying I'd go I have to get back to because I'd be up, I'd be gone up, let's say, the headlands, you know, going in around the caves and thinking I was a pirate and everything. Mm-hmm. But I knew if I didn't get back to the pier at 4 p.m., they'd leave without me for the lobster fishing. Mm. But I'd no watch. Mm. How did I know? Mm. I knew by the where the how the the position of the ocean, the mm. tide, the tides. Yeah. Do you find me, that yourself that you have it's a different for me? It's it's like apart from the connection with the tide in terms of uh the timing of the tide. Yeah. To be, to, be, to be honest, my connection isn't with the sea at all. It's with the land. Okay. Uh, it's with the land on the edge. It's with the, it's with the, like for me, when the tide really goes out far, that's when, you know, on a full moon or on a new moon, you know, tw- twice a month, you get the opportunity to explore new, inverted commas, land, uh, new territory. Really? Where the periwinkles and the kelp and the, uh, and all the new creatures. So for me, it's kind of like exploring the land rather than, you know, the tide going out allows me to be have this... more land to yes, it. Yes. yes. So Isn't that so amazing? And is it different on, is it different? And does, does, does the, does the full moon and new moons affect that 
Well, that yeah. amount of land that you'd had, that oh, amount yeah. of sand oh, that you'd, yeah. isn't yeah. that incredible? Yeah. yeah. So like oh, my, my I time, love it. timetable, uh, like I print out <laughs> a year ahead or whatever for here, so I'd have it at the flick of a page. Um, but down to the millimeter, it'll tell you what height it will be each day. Incredible. So as the new moon is waning or waxing, I always get mixed up. Uh, as the new moon is arriving, now to say, yeah. Uh, it's yeah, it's, tiny, it's, it's, it's gone tiny. from full, it's gone waning into the waning, new moon, yeah, new so, moon so at the moment. Waning, yeah. the low tide is getting further and further, what? lower and lower, which means further and further out because the beach is... So you've more sand. So, you, so each day you'll get more and more and more sand. So if you're wow. returning to the same spot, like it might only be two centimetres lower, but that might be 100 metres uh, on a big flat, on a fairly flat beach. Incredible. New territory. Uh, so it's kind of like exploring new territory, really. Absolutely. That's amazing. Uh, that's, like, what, that's the kind of sense I have. Now, mm. Obviously, you're looking out at the sea and you're listening to the sea and mm. you're revolving around the sea and the sea at the end of the day is the master of the beach in terms of like it comes and wipes everything away and you have to leave yeah. or you have to, you know, it's unless you have a Absolutely, I understand. Kit, you, where you can stay in the same position. Uh, but so, yeah, so, so for me, it's more about connection with the ground. So when you were doing your sand art, John, and as you said, you're dependent on the sea, aren't you? Because you know within a few hours that your art is going to be gone because the sea will come in and just take it away. Yeah. But what's that feeling you have? You you don't mind that. You you have an acceptance of the ocean for doing that. Um, so what inspires you to um, create the art you create? Because it's amazing. I've seen you doing your sand art. You've plenty of videos on the page. Uh, it's just amazing. Uh, I suppose what inspires me, um, <clears throat> like um, more recently, I suppose in the last few weeks, like, yeah, it's it's my job. It is my job. I know it's you your make, job. I make a living from it now, yeah. thankfully. Uh, and as I said, for a few months, I was very busy, literally on tour where you're working under a brief and there's commercial and there's certain things, you know, you're trying to get the job done and that's your, that's your bread and butter. Yeah. But I suppose the winter, I really love the winter because the inspiration for me, um, of being able to go to the beach, uh, without a brief or without a preconceived notion in my head, um, of what I'm about to draw. And even now, like my favorite mm -hmm. thing is to arrive and be in a position on, on the sand with my stick or with my rake uh, and just to draw without knowing what I'm going to draw. And that for me is the biggest inspiration of allowing your body to kind of uh, like they talk about the uh, what's it called? Uh, not the, the zone. You're, you're in the zone. Is that the word? Or, yeah. Um, in the flow. They use flow, the word flow. Yeah. Um, or in a v type of vortex or yeah. a moment yeah. where this yeah. amazing yeah. thing comes out yeah. of you exactly. and you're off. Yeah. So, so yeah, the <laughs> creating. Thing, I think it's kind of becoming more scientifically accepted yeah. even yeah. these days. I understand. You would have been seen as kind of like that even 10 years ago. Like, oh, Jesus, wait, I like yeah. a bit of arty party or a bit of, oh, well, that, no. he's in his Zen mode or whatever. Yeah. But like, to be honest, like that is becoming mm. more scientifically uh, proven that, you know, there is yeah. this flow state. <gasps> Well, it's the same when you're drawing mantras. You don't know what you're going to draw yeah. Yeah. until you start to draw it. And yeah. then it just flows out of you yeah. what your what yeah. your mantra is. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah. So I'm presuming it's the same for you when you're down. Well, it, not always. Not always. Like, I mean, um, different levels of uh, flow state, shall we say, or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. um, there has been mm -hmm. once or twice where, well, once in particular that I really remember um, literally a drawing that almost drew itself. Uh, it's kind of like as if I was just a, a tool. Facilitator. Facilitator. You know, what my yeah. body, did, where my body decided to go to draw this piece. And I remember like when I started, there was lots of people on the beach and audio is a big thing with sand art for me because you really, really tune into, you can hear a pin drop. Okay. Because you're in the zone or you're in the, you know, you're really you're in the, yeah, focused into yeah. what you're doing. And where you are and what you're you know, really what you're creating you let everything go it's kind of a real mindful experience but you can hear like a car miles away you can hear a seagull or you can hear you, like uh, I've, I've, I've witnessed um the tide turn and that's that that's you wouldn't always hear that it's quite rare you really have to be clued in to kind of like fear this, the tide actually there's a gurgling change the audio actually changes wow when you know you might know that the tide should be t i never look at my watch when i when i get started that's what i'm telling you about the ocean you, you, don't you, can, anywhere. you can really feel this change of yes. audio and atmosphere and the birds come in rather than go out or 
vice versa, or they're flying high. Yeah, or different I sounds. know what you're talking about. And it's normally, or the wind arrives as well, t- turning yeah. the tide. So when you're really in that moment, like like on that occasion, I said to you, like I remember after a few hours, reali- it was almost like realizing, uh, waking up, there was nobody left on the beach, um, and it was just me uh, up to my ankles in the water as, as the tide returned or whatever it was. And it was very much, I became aware at that point, it was like those last few hours, they weren't like a blur, they were just like... Did you feel like time stood still? Yeah, it yeah. was, um, there wasn't time. Time didn't exist. That's it, what it, I'm saying, it, yeah, it, yeah. It, uh, so it wasn't um, like, I did, when I kind of, inverted commas, snapped out of it at the end, it's kind of like, it was kind of like, um, I don't know how to describe it really. Um, it happens at different scales each time I'm on the beach, but that on that occasion, I really remember, you know, it was just me. Uh, I had no brief. I drew something beautiful. I can't remember what it was, but I remember it was really, I was really yeah. enjoying it. Um, uh, and so it wasn't really like time stand still. It was just like floating in. You got into the moment. In, in, in a dream. In a moment, I'm not yeah. quite sure how you describe it. It's or, just in the moment. Yeah. 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 So well, I know what you mean. So yeah. that for me would be the big inspiration and the big goal for me would be to, uh, you know, we have a beautiful lifestyle here, but we all have things going on in our head. And for me, it's that attempt to kind of like really switch off and uh, not be thinking about all those other things and uh, without forcing the thoughts uh, to go away, uh, allowing them to come through you, but then just to be into this blank state of um, uh, just being absorbed in what you're doing. Absolutely. And then, some, of course, somebody comes up to you and says, oh, so what are you doing today? Then? <laughs> <laughs> well... Sean, thanks for sharing that. I, I mean, I know what you, I know how, what you're trying to express about that moment. You know that you feel, because um, yeah, I've had those moments too where you come out of it and you realise it's nearly four hours later, and you're going, "What? What the mm. hell? What the hell? What, what happened there? I just got lost in some dreamlike." And it's so peaceful. Yeah. Yeah. It's it is. It's amazing. Yeah. So and, and also what we so many people these days, uh, particularly in the Western world, live in this nine to five. Yes. Got to go. The kids go to school at a certain time yeah. or got T- time to, dictates it's the week end. Uh, got to go and visit the uh, yeah. in-laws. You're or dictated what, by time so, all so, along. So, so all, we're, yeah. we're all pigeonholed into these bundles of time. Yeah. That we kind of like get up at a certain time in the morning and we go to bed, you know, or the news is on at nine o'clock or whatever, this whole cycle of time. And for me, uh, if you can kind of break down that mold and uh, get up at odd times of the day or stay up all night. (laughs) I'm at four o'clock in the morning, girl. Yeah, challenge challenge yourself in kind of different... Well, it just happened over the years. I I mean, I'm I'm used to it. It's normal for me to be up at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I, you know. And like... But nine out of ten people, or maybe more, don't um, they don't uh, allow themselves to think outside the box in terms of time. Um, so, like with some of the events I've been doing over the last year or two, I've been doing kind of like extended, like six hour, ten hour, twelve hour, and up to twenty four hour uh, events, um, where I'm now starting to bring people into the wilderness uh, to experience. Uh, things like I'm doing, I'm doing an 18 hour one for the for the winter solstice. I and, saw um, that. Can you tell me a bit about that, Sean, and how you got, how you are after getting into uh, the, they would be like the ancient festivals, wouldn't it? Like winter solstice is part of the yeah. ancient festivals. Yeah. So yeah. So I'd love to hear how you got got into that. Well, well I suppose um, uh, for me, it's not really um, mm. about the tradition. Um, that, you know, okay, it's a certain turning point in the universe's connection on a broader sense mm-hmm. in terms of it being the uh, shortest night. Shortest day shortest in the Shortest day yeah. and the longest night. So yeah. I suppose for me, it's a more of a personal thing. It's a kind of a sensory thing. It's kind of like a veiling of the opportunity of so much darkness. Um, okay. So like I've been doing, like from a sensory, like as an artist, like, when we think of our senses, whatever, we think of what we can see or what we can hear or uh, what we can taste, what we can smell. Or 
So for me, I'm kind of experimenting with the senses. Uh, and I, so I've been retreating into nature myself privately for years. Uh, it could be just going into the forest or spending overnight in a field or just, just you know, it could be summertime or, or wintertime or whatever. Um, creative and positive kind of challenges where you block out any negativity that you uh, don't allow any negativity to enter your thoughts wow. uh, for a set period of time until it gets bright or until it gets dark. Uh, so in the last couple of years, then I've been bringing people, I've been slowly but surely uh, bringing people on those experiences. I'd love to go. Groups, one, I'd love to go on one with you now that you're talking about well, it. it, it I love to like, talk to you I after. When I started bringing people on them first, it was kind of I wasn't sure is this going to ruin it for me because like you know this whole idea of sitting in a ditch, as Joe, my friend Joe says, or or like a. Uh, lying in a hedgerow mm. and a robin comes and lands on the branch and oh, you're, how you're wonderful. kind of quiet and this bird is looking at you or yeah. or a grey hooded crow flies past and screams or um, the skylarks that are in, on the coast at the moment like when you really clue in uh, to the sounds and I'd surroundings love that. that nature you become part of nature yeah. so I was kind of concerned I suppose that it would um, perhaps kind of ruin it for me Um but no, I've slowly but surely brought three people, five people, uh, eight people, and I'm bringing a maximum of 10 people on some of the winter solstice. Fantastic. Uh, so I think there's uh, seven people have uh, committed to it. Uh, okay. Now it's a big challenge because it's an 18-hour overnight outdoor uh, okay. thing. And um, where, like, where, are we, where are you, where, well, what are you doing? It's, where? it's, um, it's going to be on the Copper Coast, so okay. I'm going to reveal a meet-up location to the 10 participants. Yeah, they um, don't know where they're going yet. They don't know no. where they're going yeah. yet. Uh, like I did one during um, the Culture Night, uh, where I had eight participants. Uh, it wasn't a full overnight. Um, uh, I think it was a 12-hour. I mm. can't remember exactly, but it was a 12-hour thing. And I think there was eight of us, eight, eight participants and myself. Uh, and that really taught me a lot about how to facilitate a group you know, okay, we're sitting around a fire and, you know, now if you think back, like most times I've ever been invited to sit around a fire at a beach or whatever, it's kind of like there's drink involved or there's, you know, or you're cooking, you your or whatever, story, yeah, or yeah. There's a, so, so for me, I've gotten a very long uh, list of uh, what we won't be doing as much as what we will be doing. And that involves like, there will be no drink, there will be no drugs, there will be no uh, talking will actually be very, very limited. Okay. Um, so the silence actually is yeah. perfect because it's only in that space of spi yeah. silence yeah. that you can actually experience it for yourself. Yeah. If there's yeah. too much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I know what you mean. You have to sit in the silence. And yeah. Sitting in silence in a group is different to sitting in silence on your own. Because when you're sitting in silence on your own, but you're never really on your own because you have your voice inside your head, even if you're not speaking words. Yeah. Like, so you, your thoughts and your, yeah. you know, those like. But when you're when you're with a group and so we're all talking away, mm. and we all we we, we have everything. Mm. We have, you know, mm. we, we, everything is fine. We're in the sanctuary of you know everything is in. A, we're all in a good place, and then when we become quiet, uh, there's this beautiful sense of. Um, you know, it's okay if somebody stands up and walks around or, you know, or puts something in the fire. But there's a sense of serenity, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, but also we become it becomes a kind of a communal uh, piece as well. Yeah. You're within the sanctuary and peace of everybody, so it becomes a, a, yeah. a, a unit. Yeah, and, and, the, like, and the fire burning, that watching the flames is mesmerising, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. so yeah. like the fire is kind of like a centrepiece as well. Mm. So I bring my washing machine drum. I don't like to scorch uh, rocks, uh, so... Yes. I just bring in an old washing machine drum that I have. Great. And we bring our old twigs and um, uh, bits of wood or whatever we have. Yeah. So it's a nice centerpiece. Yes. Even though it's not really going to keep you warm. Ten people can't really stay warm around a little fire like that. Yeah. But it's a centerpiece and it's a focal point to come back to if somebody wanders off in the middle of the night. So that one is, uh, that's a very challenging uh, experience. So seven brave souls have signed up for that already. Okay. It's an 18 hour. So it starts before, it starts on the 20th of December. We kind of think of the solstice as the 21st of December. 21st, yeah. Well, it actually falls at 3.59 p.m. on the 21st. Like technically the scientific moment mm. of the solstice is at 3.59 p.m. on 
on the 21st of on December. the 21st this year so yeah i'm starting it uh on the 20th and it runs through uh, the golden hour we start before the sun goes down so for me the uh things that happen in the universe in terms of uh you know the birds go to bed or you know uh the na nature changes the That's light right. drops yes. daylight drops the sun goes down the moon comes up those kind of um features of the universe are, are the only real timetable like i've written out 12 or 15 things that will happen in that 18 hours yes that like like the sun will go down the moon mm. will come up the... have you have have you experienced um that time of night where it's just before dawn have you have you experienced that mm -hmm. um have you ever experienced that um there's a there's a millisecond of a it's like you said about the ocean you can you felt the turning of the tide. You actually felt it within you. There's a time just before dawn as well. It's a millisecond where it's like a no thing, a nothing. Well, I and I, I've I've felt it. I think yeah. about three times in my yeah. life. Yes. Yeah. And the minute it happens, the first bird sings. It's like that's dawn. Hmm. And I've often thought, is that what triggers the birds to start dawn chorus because they feel this. This inter this millisecond of an interim between the night mm -hmm. and just as the sun is going to dawn, to actually dawn mm -hmm. into this, you know. I mean, the first time I ever felt it, I went, what the hell was that? It was like, you know, it's just this nothing. Well, I've never. Um, Have you ever experienced not, that? Not to that level. But oh, it was, wow. it was. And twice I've experienced it since then. Uh, I've never experienced it since but i was i was speaking to a buddhist about a buddhist monk about it and he said oh you and that's what he called it it's the no thing the no thing it's called oh. just between it's called the, like end, the no thing the no they call it the no thing oh. and it's literally the end of the night and a millisecond before it's dawn and and then I wondered, as I said afterwards, was that the trigger for the birds to know that mm. that was when dawn chorus would start? Yeah, because dawn chorus starts with one, and then yeah. they join in. Do you know the yeah. way it builds they take up? Turns they well, do. Like, they, take turns they, they take turns at lead. They take. They're over, then we'll start. You know, yeah, they take turns in leading the chorus. Yeah. Actually, yeah. different yeah. birds yeah. lead the chorus yeah. at different times of yeah. the year. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think the blackbird is doing it at the moment. I think you might be right. Yes. Yeah, the blackbird. Um, yeah. Yeah. The crow yeah. takes it sometimes. After the blackbird, I've been listening. The, the wren radio. joins in around the middle of it. That's yeah. if you've wrens around. Yeah. It's like, uh, I know dawn choruses because I've, I listen to them every morning. So I know they're different at different seasons. The word dawn is a, is a tricky one because it's like scientifically, if you break it down, right, to that no thing that you're describing. Yeah. Like there is like... The research I'm doing at the moment in the build up to the winter solstice is like, I mean, there's there's the nautical twilight, there's the civil twilight, um, there's a third one, maritime. I, I, there's, there's three or four different types of twilight. OK. And, and then there's first light. Wow. And then there's then there's sunrise, of course. So there's like, like scientifically, there's like there's, you know, if you were out in a ship uh, and there's no light, uh, yeah. you're going to see first light. Before, I mean, somebody in the city, of course, yeah. uh, you know, there's, there's light pollution or whatever. Yeah, and, so you, know, you can't see yeah. that. Yeah. So, so, but it's like um, the same with sunset. I mean, people think of the uh, the light, they all run to the most scenic part of the island to mm. see the sunset and they photograph the sunset mm. and it's beautiful in the sky. But a friend of mine once told me, um, Pascal Whelan, he lived, he lived, he lived, God rest him, uh, on a beautiful part of Omi Island. Um, on the far side of in Connemara on Omi Island, and he used to say to me, uh, he lived in a mobile home in this amazing location, uh, and people used to come along every day to photograph the sunset. And they'd wow. drive along, they'd walk along, they'd, they'd arrive, and they'd, yeah. they'd photograph the sunset, and they, oh, isn't that fantastic? And they'd all, ching, ching, isn't that brilliant? Mm. And they'd all go away. Then he'd come out, because the best part of sunset is after the sun has set. Yeah. That's when the magic happens. Yes. And, like, and when that sun disappears down behind the horizon, you know, um, okay, we have this kind of maybe idea in our head of this picture postcard sunset or sunrise. Yes. And it's kind of like, there's that moment in time. Yeah. 
you know, because you can identify it. When it when there's not clouds blocking the sun, it's like the sun has now set. So it's kind of like I suppose the uh, the challenge of finding that no thing or the kind of like yeah. the moment it doesn't happen. I don't be... know if it happens at sunset, but it definitely I've experienced it at just before the dawn. Yeah. And also as you were talking about the different twilights and the lights um, uh, from, let's say, from the time of Bealtaine to summer solstice the, and summer solstice going to lunacy even the 1st of August, the night sky is never black. There's a kind of an indigo hu hue because mm. you can see in the horizon the sun really hasn't set. You can still see this beautiful blue indigo the 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 the, the, the night sky has a blue black color it's only in the winter that you have that black sky yeah. you know and so we really have a black sky when you think of the moon i mean the moon is like a big light bulb in the sky exactly well the sun illuminates yeah. her yeah. yeah yeah like it's like like there's amazing light off the moon unbelievable amazing light off yeah the moon. yeah and even on the darkest day with the uh uh, with a new moon, um, even with even with a new moon, like you can still there's still ambient light. Absolutely, to walk around without yeah. torch. Yeah, uh, and I think it was last year in winter solstice that, or winter solstice that we had a full moon on the winter solstice, right, yeah. which was amazing. Yeah, and was it, was it some some special type of moon as well? It was it. I can't remember uh, the it was full, as, yeah, the full kind of, moon on the winter. I can't remember what yeah. its name. The last full moon we had was the hunter full moon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because yeah. that would have been associated with the ancestors. It's the it's the last full moon before Samhain, which we're yeah. having this yeah. this weekend, yeah. um, and that would have uh, instigated um, that they went hunting for meat for yeah. the winter yeah. to keep them going. You know, because yeah. the crops, yeah. you know, had stopped growing and the the land was resting. Yeah. So sorry, I interrupted you there because that conversation is absolutely fascinating to me about what I you're suppose, doing. I suppose for me, from, <clears throat> it's a way more simpler. I wouldn't have a patch of the knowledge that you'd have in terms of like the traditions and the folklore yeah. and what it meant back to our ancestors and so yeah. on. For me, it's kind of like uh, slowing down the pace of the body in terms of like yeah. the metabolism of yeah. the mind yeah. so that you can kind of, um, you know, 18 hours feels like a long time to spend in the will in the outdoors yeah. in the night in the dark for people yeah but it's not a long time our no. lives are you know we you know we we, we spend eight or ten hours in our bed yeah. to sleep sometimes whatever and yeah why not it, spend 18 well, hours up in the night and, yeah. and the rest of the yeah, time so asleep yeah. it's kind of like a se sensory kind of uh absolutely um, journey that i'm going on in terms of discovering these new things in terms of uh nighttime the atmosphere of the of the planet you know when there's no birds singing yeah. But there's no car driving yeah. past. Yeah. And, you know, then um, you, you, you see beauty in simple things. Exactly. And I know you said I have a lot of knowledge and everything, but Sean, that really doesn't matter that I have a lot of knowledge. You are actually experiencing what probably our ancestors experienced. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter that you don't know. Yeah, I don't know yeah. You're actually experiencing an amazing connection to the our planet and our universe by yeah. what you're yeah. w the feelings you're getting from doing yeah. it and for you yeah. to even think of yeah. doing that yeah. is, is enough you know well, I'll give you a very simple example right? yeah um, maybe six months ago or a year ago I can't really remember what time of the year maybe it's about a year ago it could have been maybe this time of the year uh, I woke up in the middle of the night and couldn't sleep now it's three in the morning now I know you're an early right? yeah <laughs> I, I wouldn't be. I'd be a late riser. Yeah. Um, but so this was unusual for you. This would be unusual for me. Um, and I took it on myself at that moment. I'm lying in bed kind of going, oh, tossing and turning. You know, we all toss and turn. Or, you know, you start thinking about tomorrow and what you have to do. Look, you don't want to be thinking about that. And you want to try and sleep. You're tossing and turning. Right, that's it. I, I said to myself, I'm getting up. Right. Miranda was asleep. But I said to myself, right, no, that's it. I'm getting up. Got dressed, put on a big coat and uh, went out the door. And uh, the dogs didn't even wake up. And I and I went for a walk and it was like, hadn't planned it. It was impromptu. Didn't know what direction when I got onto the road, I was going to go left or was I going to go right? And I went left. And uh, it was beautiful. It was peaceful. Um, I didn't have a phone with me, didn't have a torch with me. There was nobody on the road. There was no cars, there was no people, there was no birds. And it was kind of... Um, 
I went down past Kilmurran Cove uh, and down the hill, across Kilmurran Cove and up the, continued up the road and there's a little car park, the first little car park or is it the second, the second little car park. Um, I went in there and uh, I walked across the grass um, and I found this rock. Now it was, it's, 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 you know, it's about this size of a rock. It's, I don't know, it wouldn't even be a quarter of a ton. It's not, you know, uh, David Keown, the amazing rock lifter guy would be able to lift it, but it's um, maybe slightly bigger than what he'd be able to lift actually. <laughs> um, but, but I found this rock and with the light, the dew on the rock, um, uh, it was just like a, a gem. It was like, it was, the rock was kind of like black limestone, really, really dark limestone, but it had a millimeter, a, 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 a micro millimeter of dew. Uh, it wasn't even like your typical uh, uh, dew that you see gathering on uh, grass and things. It was, but it was just like glowing, like a kind of an aura, like a silver aura. Wow. Um, and the moon wasn't out. I think it was slightly cloudy, but the moon was lighting it in some way. I don't really remember much about how the moon was lighting that be honest but it was just it's it in itself uh and i sat with it for for a minute or two literally is all uh and uh and then i turned around and i went home wow. and uh, i can't remember to go back to bed but it was kind of like you kind of go on a journey and you reach your destination and then you return so it's kind of like uh four in the evening when you go for the lobsters back in your day and your yeah. childhood memories of, you know you get the lobsters and then you bring them back so it's kind of like a journey for that. That re it really resonated with me, and I go and visit the rock again. You know, but it's never had the same. Uh, you know, I don't uh, sit with the rock anymore. It's just, you know, it was just a moment um, uh, uh, in time, and uh, for me, it was just like that impromptu thing. So if anyone's listening, I can't sleep. Uh, if you can't sleep, get up, get up, and uh, go out, go out, and you'll be surprised what magic you might yeah, be shown. Yeah. Or make a cup of tea. Yeah. Make a cup of tea. Go out. Yeah. Make a cup of tea. Be really, really quiet. Look up at those nice stars. Go and into, Yeah. Yeah. Get breathe, lost in the star. In the breathe. Listen, listen, I know. Listen to something you've never listened to before. Exactly. The audio outside your own back door. Exactly. Um, well, I love the silence at that time of the morning. It's before the world wakes up and gets busy. And it's like my morning prayer or my morning meditation. I don't know what I call it, but I could not live my life unless I have that every morning now. So what I love goes it. through your mind in those hours? Nothing. Would you be drinking tea? I'd have my coffee or my tea. Nothing. I just. I just honour and embrace the silence. It's so beautiful. And would you be would you be clued into every pin drop? Like if. if if, uh, a yeah, crack, yeah. Or... You'd hear I. I sometimes you'd hear the wind going through the leaves. Mm. Uh, you'd hear maybe a distant fox. You'd hear something. You know, could it be a fox passing down the field? Anything. You know, you'd mm. hear the noises, but it's just the silence that mm. that a beautiful, tranquil, serene silence before dawn. Wow. Mm. And it's accessible to every single person it's there, on this planet. It is there every morning yeah. for everyone. Yeah. And that dawn chorus, it, do you know, that's what really saddens me sometimes that children, even adults, don't know there is even a dawn chorus. Mm. And it's there. It happens every morning. Mm. It's been happening for millions of years. Or the closest it, thing they've ever experienced is they've listened to some podcast or seen a TV yeah. program where some guy yeah. goes out and records. Yeah. Um, there's some thing. Irish guy actually is mad into the dawn chorus. He's on or uh, Der, uh, what's his name? Gander. Derek, uh, Derek Mooney. Mooney. Yeah, yeah. And he introduced that's the dawn right. chorus right. to people. So many people hadn't heard it before he did that. Like, what you know, a dawn chorus? What's, what's that? that? How that? Yeah. It happens yeah. every morning yeah. and it's yeah. so, yeah. so beautiful. And roll it a step back uh, to the no thing um, before that. Yes. And, uh, you know, if you had to drop somebody to the airport, uh, at some ungodly error, do you know, and you've dropped them off and you're on your way home. Yeah. Stop. Stop. Stop and turn off the lights in the car. And, and you know, listen. And, and, yeah. like, and actually it teaches you to listen, to listen correctly because mm. you're, you're at the night time, your listening skill, skills are honed because you're in mm. the dark. Mm. And 
every little rustle, you, you'll hear it. Mm. During the day, you won't hear it yeah. because life is too busy and this car is passing. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. You know, it's it's busy. But at night time, that mm. silence, it's like you're honed. Your whole body is yeah. honed into this experience of this silence of this particular part of the night. But it also regulates your body in terms of when the when when the world starts waking up and the animals and nature and uh, humans and everyone's know, and then it, it, so it teaches you to cycle as well of like it goes from it goes from this level of decibels to this one and comes back yeah. in a graph and um like it, it actually reminds me there uh, Miranda and I used to live in a little house in, in Waterford City okay a tiny little house yeah and on the on a junction on a crossroads with little, um, traffic lights <gasps> and outside our little window was the traffic lights literally there and uh, people used to say, God, how could you sleep at night? And, you know, the traffic lights and people coming. It's quite a busy part of the town. And, you know, people yeah. would be going home late at night or whatever. And um, so you'd often have the windows open in the summertime, whatever, at night. But your body becomes regulated to the sound of a city as well as in the It does. It does. And, like, the green man would come on. So you'd hear the beep of the green man, which means that somebody's pressed the button and somebody's going home. Uh, or whatever but your your body even though you're still asleep it's connected to that and it's only like when you hear uh something that shouldn't happen then yeah um happening that your body says well hold on why yeah. why is this yeah. different thing actually a friend of mine um, came with me and stayed in a cottage one time and she couldn't sleep because of the silence yeah there you go Oh my God, this is yeah. too quiet for me. I can't yeah. sleep. Because yeah. she was used to the yeah. noise of the traffic and passing outside her window. Yeah. And there's a new thing I'm studying at the moment. Well, I haven't studied much of it now. It's yeah. called cognitive, be you know, cog CBT, cognitive behavior therapy. Right. There's a new thing in cognitive behavior therapy is the kind of thing that where you kind of like change your mindset to more positive outlook. And yes. Not yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. I've heard of it. Yeah. A, it's, a, it's a method of, you know, bringing it back to a positive outcome. Yeah. Um, but there's now CBTI, which is cognitive behavior therapy, insomnia. Really? Yeah. Now, I, I, as I said, I've, I've just been reading about it a little bit lately. And what it is, is kind of like, so if you can change, if you can't sleep, right? So well, what, it's not that I can't sleep. I go to bed oh, early. Yeah, I get in yeah, my seven yeah, hours. Yeah. Pe people often yeah. say to me, Marty, did you ever go to bed? <laughs> I actually do. I go to yeah. bed early yeah. and uh, yeah. I'm up early, yeah. you know, yeah. so I'm getting my seven but, hours. But, I'm not, people who can't I'm not sleep. deprived yeah. of sleep. Yeah. Yeah. I know, <laughs> I know but really, people yeah. have said yeah. to me, you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. But like, if, if you think about like sleep time, right? As, yeah. Like for, for like it's been a terrible thing when you can't sleep. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. God, you so, have to sleep. So why is it that you can't sleep, right? So if you if you can think of what is it that I'm doing that is my brain isn't able to switch off or yeah. whatever yeah. the triggering like this triggers with exactly yeah. behavior therapy insomnia as well. Yeah. From what I can gather that like your body says if you're go 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 all the time, and then your body lies down. If that's not the right trigger for you, you need to find a different trigger. Um, and there's another thing I'm studying as well at the moment is uh, a thing called ASMR. Have you heard of that? No. If you look up, um, again, it's only becoming mainstream scientific. Um, mm. There isn't even a hell of a lot of data on it. It stands for, um, I can't remember the words exactly right now, ASMR. I think of it as as Mr. So as Mr. is basically... Uh, do you know when the hair is standing on the back of your head? If you have an experience, like some people experience yeah, music yeah. and it, yeah, something the, the hair, hair, yeah, yeah, and the, the hair like standing your arm become this uh, um, an ele electronic, yes, yeah, <laughs> kind of like a, a different uh, version of that. It's kind of almost um, uh, it's a, a more advanced version, of, like kind of nearly everybody gets that at some stage in their life. But this yeah. is kind of like. Uh, some people, like for some example, some people say it's like someone walked over my grave or something, yeah, you know. Yeah, 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 there, yeah there is yeah. a name on that, but ASMR yeah. is a kind of way of triggering this. Like you, on YouTube, you see these videos. If you if you put in those letters ASMR, uh, you'll be bombarded with these crazy uh, kind of videos. Oh, let's look that up. Yeah, the first time you see them, now you'll think, oh, these are crazy people. What yeah, are yeah, they? Yeah. Why are they doing this? Like, yeah. this, like uh, grooming, uh, grooming yourself or having somebody groom you. Or v visually watching somebody touching their skin or coming in close to the camera or recording bin binaurally where 
only the left if you have a pair of headphones on yeah and if you record things in isolation only for the left only for the for the right right and swap them across like it's called panning in audio oh right it can confuse the brain i would well, say yeah, is your it brain, your, yeah the, the, the and it causes a trigger which it can be kind of like what what is happening here like, You're like right. uh, tapping of um continuous tapping that sounds like torture. <laughs> well, well, yes, some people you might think, yeah, 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 yeah. But, but this kind of like repeated sound or rhythm okay. or movement. Yeah. Um, they've done studies in it. It can trigger this ASMR response okay. in people, which can be very beneficial really? for sleeping. Okay. For again, for oh, uh, I don't have any problem sleeping. Yeah, I well, literally, me, me yeah. That's the last thing I please. literally go into bed and I'm exhausted. <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? Because I'm always like running sleep around. Yeah. Sleep in the dike, like, yeah. In the <laughs> I go uh, unconscious. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my <laughs> God. Four o'clock. Oh, no problem. Oh, no problem. Oh, it's no. four o'clock. Yeah, yeah, oh, get up tight. Yeah. Yeah. But like for me, the sensory thing that I'm kind of doing with my own work, um, like. I mean, I used to call myself a visual artist, but now I call myself an environmental artist because it's a bit broader. It means I, Brilliant. Can, use, I can use a microphone now. Yeah. Whereas a visual artist, why would a visual artist <laughs> use a microphone? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, uh, so yeah, so I'm an environmental artist. And for me, those kind of things and that kind of knowledge that I'm... Uh, I love your... That's why I love so your art. You, you're so connected. The audio yeah. and the recordings. I have a new podcast. Uh, I that. saw that. Yeah, I, I, lis I, I listened to it and you you did post it on the Ren Circle yeah, and yeah, I was saying I, I, yeah. I actually commented on it. Um, I said, I'm 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 actually amazed at your observations, your 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 how you observe. And uh, that's an amazing skill in art to have as well to sit. Oh, thank you. Yeah, to sit in silence and observe. It's mm. we we don't sit long enough yeah. these days yeah. to actually observe. Take it all in yeah. through all the senses: yeah. your eyes, how you feel about it. Yeah. You know, yeah. to sit at an ocean here today. I mean, brought back memories to me. I'm sure. Yeah, that um, I learned as a child. I learned to respect the ocean. Mm. It can take you. Mm. Uh, my grand, my uncles told me that, you know, I said, I can't swim. And they said, even if you could swim, they said you'd never make it back yeah. to the shore anyway. Yeah. So if the ocean's going to take you, it'll take you. Yeah. And you, it might as well be over fast, really, yeah. because yeah. You, you'd never make it back to shore. Yeah. And so I respected the ocean for that. Mm. That she could take you, yeah. how beautiful she was, but her yeah. depths had yeah. hidden dangers. And yeah. I learned that from them. Mm. I think that was a great teaching for me as a child. But if you look now at the amount of people uh, in the last 18 months that have gone to the sea as a source of inspiration, like the sea swimmers, for example. Yeah. Or like my my wife, Miranda, like she, she goes swimming most days. Yeah. Uh, I was just down in Bow Strand, there was a lady yeah, swimming, yeah. yeah a lot yeah, of surfers yeah. surfers were out That's in Anstown, right. yeah. Uh, and Arison Alpi is a great surfer. He just like he was he will stay out there and not surf for hours I know. and hours on end and really uh, So regulate. even your son, that connection yeah. he has yeah. with the ocean, yeah. Yeah. he knows I'm sure he knows every wave and how it oh, breaks yeah. Yeah. and yeah. because he's living it on yeah. his surfboard he yeah. knows yeah. it's also such a sensation of just being out there exactly from the rest of the world yes don't have to do having that things. moment having with the ocean moment, lolling around and yeah. just being like a like a like a seal just yes. around it or a dolphin or whatever like yeah it's just kind of like out there experiencing mm. um nature in that way and like with sea swimmers as well like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people around Ireland, like maybe thousands, I don't know how many, uh, like are experiencing the wilderness of the ocean yeah. in that way now yeah. and uh, yeah. uh, regulating their body by becoming cold and bring them back, uh, bring it back to room, you know, that whole uh, cycle of the body, yeah. how, it, how it changes yeah. the dynamic of yeah. your, you know, and... Like we're part of nature. Yeah. Nature is part of us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you you must you must maintain that connection with yeah. this land and the yeah. ocean. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's yeah. just magical, yeah. really. And and, and so, it makes so, you feel so good. Yeah. So it's great to see that people are finding that connection. Yeah. Like, because so many people, if you ask them, if you said a word like nature, if you said that, well, what, what kind of nature is around your house? People would say, oh well, they'll they'll identify the big the big uh, 
uh, landmark things like, oh, a fox came across my back wall uh, last week or, you know, or it did, but it, they'd be thinking of mammals, really. Yeah. You know, um, whereas the air, the wind. The trees. You know, the trees. The grass. Yeah. Or what you said earlier. The stones. The stones. The, yeah. Anything. <laughs> like like the, the feeling of the planet, looking at the stars in the sky. Yeah. Um, like, like experiencing those kind of things. That is nature. We're, as you said, we're part of nature. We're in nature. But we, but as a species, we kind of like, we fe- we kind of isolate ourselves from it and we live on the couch in front of the telly. Yeah. Uh, so many of us. Yeah. And we kind of like, uh, you well, know, nature is Our whole thing. body's made of carbon. That yeah. comes from the stars. We're yeah. full of water. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so we have a major yeah. connection with water. Yeah. You need to yeah. stimulate those, yeah. uh, the, those, yeah. that, that, that carbon and that water yeah. that's in you, you need yeah. to have it stimulated yeah. by what's outside of you exactly. because it's inside of you yeah. as well, yeah. you know. So it's fantastic in the yeah. last 18 months to see that people, because of the change of what's going on in the world, like it, it's fantastic to see that people have had to reinvent themselves. Yeah. Because they're not working or because they're not doing this thing that they had to do before, they're kind of like... Well, a lot of people to... worked from home and they yeah. loved it. Yeah. Yeah. They had more time with yeah. their family. Yeah. The dogs had a great time in yeah. trim. They were walked about it ten times a yeah, day so that right. you could get everyone right. who was right. out of the house. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Do you and know? creatively, like for artists and musicians, oh. it's been a turning point in so many people's careers. Okay, like performers have had a hard time in terms of not being able to perform. Yeah, but I think it's taken artists and creativity deep within because you, so. it has the COVID yeah. made you had to stop. Yeah. You couldn't. You had yeah. to find other ways to yeah. be inspired or to, yeah. to actually get through your day. That's right. A lot of pe- a lot of women uh, like myself, we we succumbed to the COVID spread. We were eating all around as a yeah. cook and new recipes yeah. and, yeah. you know, yeah. but right. um, yeah, I think it was good. Yeah. There was a positivity so, that came yeah. out of the COVID. And yeah. if you look back in 100 years time at, 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 at a, a historic record of creativity in this century yeah there'll be i probably would imagine yeah. there'll be a spike there was a spike there was a t- turn in i point. mean i mean i know i have a lot of poets on the ren yeah. circle and the amount yeah. of poetry they were yeah. writing yeah um exactly. was amazing exactly. yeah so i think when you challenge yourself and it's a bit like like what we're saying about like you know if you can't sleep i mean there's a beautiful bird outside yeah of it. yeah uh What's the point in lying in bed and tar- tossing and turning your mind yeah. going around? Yeah. Get up, make yeah. up tea, go on outside yeah. 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 Exactly. and experience that beauty exactly. of the night. Yeah. Actually, there's a beautiful song written by um, from the Phantom of the Opera, opera and it's called um, The Music of the Night. Oh, yes. And I, I know, think yeah. it's, do you know it? I, did. I, I went to the Phantom of the Opera. Yes. And, on and I think, my, in my own opinion anyway, you might disagree, it is the most amazing song and the best song that I think that des- that describes the night. Oh. It is. You have to listen to it yeah. and see what you think. Yeah. Wow. Andrew Lloyd Webber must yeah. have, I When I heard <laughs> it, I said, Andrew Lloyd Webber must be a night owl because there's no way he could describe the night like that unless he experienced oh, it. Very good. Very good. You know what I mean? So I'd say he's a night yeah. owl as well. <laughs> like, definitely. Yeah. And it describes the night exactly um to perfection oh. yeah when i heard it i went oh yeah andrew lloyd webber has been up in the night <laughs> he couldn't have wrote that song if he if he he couldn't have written that if yeah. he hadn't experienced yeah. the night yeah, right. yeah absolutely right. so sean um so you're doing this on winter solstice yeah you have how many did you say I think there's two places left. Or there's two places left. Two left yeah. OK, yeah. so if any at the Ren Circle absolutely, would like to. Absolutely. Yeah, there you go. If you've, if you you've want watched, a different experience. If you've watched this video as far as here, <laughs> perhaps you're, you're one of the two people that should come. <laughs> absolutely. Um, so, Sean, what's for the future for? Um, um, I you, suppose um, for, it's, for it's a really beautiful part of time of the year for me because it's um, I put all them um, commissions behind me. Uh, and like a lot of my work in the outdoors, I have to spend as much time on the computer in terms of editing and putting films together. And I know because editing. you film your, you film yourself doing your so, sand art, don't you? And yeah, it's amazing. Or, or we'd have film crews on bigger yeah. projects. But yeah, so I do end up having to do a lot of work uh, in my little studio over there, my little yeah. office uh, editing room in there. Yeah. Uh, but I kind of said to myself a few weeks ago, I said, wait, let's just, you know, what, 
do I want to be at the beach or do I want to be inside this software? So what did you decide? Uh, well, look, first of all, I decided that microphone that I bought a few months ago. Right, that's it. I'm making a podcast and I'm starting <laughs> now today. Well, I, I suppose I, I bought the microphone with a view to starting mm. to look at sound as well. So, uh, yeah. But, but you kind of sometimes have to shake yourself up and say, all these other things can wait. And there's other, if I was knocked down by a bus next week, I mean, what would I have preferred to be doing in my last week? So sometimes, you you know, this time of the year is a great opportunity for that because all the commissions are behind me. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the winter. And in fact, the winter solstice event is a kind of a, is kind of a landmark on my, okay. on my radar. Well, are you going to document it with film or are you going I'm to document? Sure. No, I might do a little yeah. bit of audio, but I don't want Maybe. to interfere with, with, with the yeah. experience yeah. of the, of the, yeah. of the people yeah. that are on it. Like yeah. I'll tell you one little part of what is going to happen on the night. Okay. Uh, We're getting I've, a snippet here now. Yeah, a little sneak preview <laughs> uh, is, um, I've found a little place in a hedgerow that will fit when I have it. Um, I've gone in with my secretaries, uh, and I'm snipping my way, uh, into a little, um, it's a blackthorn uh, grove. Wow. Right on the edge of a cliff, <gasps> like literally. Uh, but so we'll be uh, underneath these, uh, we'll be in a, in a hedgerow, 10 people, little fire in the middle. This is part of the experience. I'm okay. Not, I haven't shown anybody this place yet. I'm working on it. Okay. Uh, my, son, my son Alfie is the only person who knows uh, its exact location, but it's got the most amazing uh, audio aspect. It's protected from the southwesterly wind. Wow. It's got a little perch. It's like a balcony. I, I kind of see it as a nest. Yes. So it's got a very, very, I'm a bird in a tree feeling. Wow. On the edge, near the cliff. On on the edge, edge of the cliff. You're going to be like the sea, you know, the the seabirds, really. Yeah. Well, like I've, I've done one, one um, dawn uh, there, uh, recorded one dawn there. Um, I've, uh, I've I, and I've, as I say, I've been snipping my way through the undergrowth, making yeah. sure not to damage any habitats. There's no badgers living there. There's no um, footprints of any animals. I've been listening to the wildlife there. I'm not like harming any habitat. By no, no. Underneath there. no, no, no. It's no. kind of in through some bracken over an old wall that must have been maybe 200 years old through a little gap and in through the back. It's hidden away, tucked away. Lovely. And it's got a little section where it's got a little, it's kind of like a little balcony. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the nest has got a balcony that overlooks I won't say where or what, but it overlooks a spectacular piece of coastline wow. um, with maybe 150 foot drop down to the shore. And um, can I ask you, does the sun rise? I was, can you see the, the sun? sun from the balcony will rise? I won't say the exact position. Oh, but, my but word. Like on the solstice, it's going to have it timed. I have it timed. I have it sun timed. <laughs> but I have it. I have it um, there's, a, there's an app called the Photographer's Ephemeris. Okay. And an ephemeris is for any time of the year, you can tell the position of the moon or sun, the sunrise or sunset or okay. any astronomical events. Okay. From any position, it's like global uh, Earth maps, Google maps. Yeah. So I know exactly where the sun is going to rise on wow. the morning of the solstice. <gasps> and this is uh, going to be from the... the perch of the nest. Yeah. So there's an exclusive for you now. <laughs> Well, that sounds amazing. I, and I'm, I'm really so, and I, that, so, yeah. well, so am I. And yeah. I'm so delighted you're doing this and Thank and you. and um, providing an uh, an opportunity for people to experience this amazing winter solstice, winter solstice sunrise. Thank you. Well, it could be any sunrise, but yeah, it's especially yeah. it's especially lovely yeah. on a winter solstice yeah. because yeah. Uh, we know when we see the winter solstice sunrise, we know it's go it's on the way back yeah, to us. You know, exactly. it's, it's yeah. a mid mid midway between winter. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So amazing, yeah. Sean. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Lovely. Wow. I that was great, Margaret. Yeah, I really yeah. really enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. We have so much in common. It's Absolutely. amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, and long success and well wishes for the future thanks a million and uh, I'm feeling I'll be down to see you again <laughs> thank you Sean you're more than welcome thank thanks you so Sean much. thank All you very much everyone. thank you